stream and play some music. Go for it. That's the music. You are listening to Mist Apex iRacing Podcast. Let's get faster. Welcome to Mist Apex iRacing Podcast, the show that looks at iRacing from a hobbyist point of view. Uh, we have taken a summer hiatus, but as promised, we have returned and we've changed things up slightly. We're going to have a shorter, sharper format. I'm bringing on just one guest a week, but I am varying the experts that we're having coming on. So don't worry, we've still got the likes of, of Dory coming on. Brad Philpot is coming back into the fray, even though... And this is painful to talk about, even though he's gone from virtual reality back to flat headland. We're going to forgive him. We're an all-encompassing podcast here. But kicking us off as our first expert guest is uh, Stuffy. Stuffy, how's it going, buddy? Hey, Spanners. Thanks for having me back on after, obviously, a little hiatus. I think this is third time. Third time now, third or fourth. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah we don't... The, uh... We, we we don't hate you, so that's fine. And I, I honestly, I get a, I get a real buzz out of, of joining an iRacing F3 session, and you go, oh, there's Stuffy off of YouTube. He's in this session as well. And then when I say hello to you, you recognise me. So I, I'm in with the big kids in iRacing now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good to see uh, some of the Mist Apex boys. Uh, I've seen them every now and then, and I had uh, the honour of Mr. Van Jean in my uh, one of my videos not too long ago and i got him spinning out right in front of me in all its glory so uh <laughs> fantastic i've missed it's, that uh, one it's good to see you guys i will catch up with that uh today i think i'm gonna grill you about some gt3 and some um lmp2 but i also want to try and convince you to join our little mini swarm championship on a monday as well where we we yes. shadow the future f3 official race and then we do our own little mini league yeah, definitely. Yeah, you mentioned it to me last week. It's just more about my if my schedule's free, one hundred percent. I'll uh, I'll be there. It's it's the it's the brush off that I expected. But look, <laughs> let, let's um, let's talk kit. You looked offended when I talked about Brad because you're also a flathead. I'm not a flathead. Oh, you VR? Oh, phew! Thank goodness. I'm VR. Oh, I'm so sorry to have insulted you in such a <sighs> horrific way. <laughs> I, I I genuinely am. No, yeah, I've I've always been VR, and I don't think I could go back. So, I've always said, yeah triples maybe to have best of both worlds but flat screen monitor oh no so when i was doing a, a flat screen monitor in fact most of the time i was using a laptop and then like propping it up on a book so it was like as open as it would go and that's my experience of flathead uh, i went to brad's <laughs> for a coffee this morning jumped on his triple screen new triple screen rig and uh, it was interesting because i i have been fervently anti flathead uh, when it's fill pot, you know it's going to be like the best available. So it's three really good curved monitors in front of you. And I, and I sat in it, and I have to say, definitely still, I'm a VR guy through and through for this. But it was it was still it was more immersive than I imagined, and it was like quite nice to not have the pain in the ass of of putting the, the headset on and off. Yeah, I, I mean, I personally have never tried triples. Uh, triples, as I said, just a short time ago, I, I would be open to the idea of getting them for me it's space hence why i went down the vr route yeah and i would like to have the best of both worlds for where it's been more when i'm doing endurance races um, it'd be nice to not have to have a vr headset on your head for two hours at a time <laughs> but for the, the vr headset feels like you're in the car the, this triple monitor that brad had it was really good but it's a really good sim and you can't get away from it's a sim. You're doing sim racing and it feels really great and it's the best that you could do. Mm. Uh, but when you put the VR headset on, you're in the car. And that's that's the thing for me is like, that's hard to get rid of, just being in the world. I don't care if it's a little bit fuzzier. I don't care if it's blockier. I want to be in my race car. Uh, let's uh, let's find out what kit you're using as well because you have that gorgeous uh, McLaren formula wheel, which I'm jealous of. What's it attached to? It's attached to a Fanatec uh, V2.5 Club Sport base, and it's it's changed my life. Uh, my, <laughs> well, well, my... well, it's changed your life. <laughs> okay. It has. Yeah, I've, I've, I've spent so much time on the sim racing, and before that I had a Thrustmaster kind of basic wheel, equivalent to a G29 Logitech, and my eye rating has just, uh, has just shot up. I'm now over 3K, um, and I put that down to the mm. wheel because I'm just – so much more consistent and much faster. Okay, actually, this is a, an interesting talking point before we get to the, the GT3s. When I went from 
the T300 th Thrustmaster to the TSPC I have now, I gained over a second instantly. And it was all on a corner exit for me. And actually realizing, oh, you, you can put your foot down. That snap isn't going to kill you. You can just kind of deal with it. Uh, so we've been doing F3 at Watkins Glen. I, I've been doing, I know the time I've consistently been doing without a, a, a toe, I've been doing 39.2s. Got into to Brad's rig. He has got the Simu Cube Direct Drive Sport uh, 2 Pro. So like a, it's like a 1300 pound wheel and this amazing <laughs> rim. And I, I, I instantly beat my time. And once I started pushing, what I realized was mid corner, you can feel so much more. You can make decisions mid corner and really get on the power so much earlier. So I think someone who's naturally risk averse like me on a corner exit will really benefit from like a wheel like yours or going up to the direct drive. I, I was just so disappointed because it, I think I think there's four tenths difference between my wheel and, and Brad's. It, it is and exactly what you said there. I, I remember beating myself up because I was looking, just comparing myself to the faster guys as you do. And I was thinking, what are they doing differently? How are they able to get their foot down on the power so early? I yeah. can't do that. And unfortunately, yeah, it, it was due to the equipment and we are held back. Just like in real life, if the car isn't performing, yeah, some drivers are held back by the equipment. It's exactly the same in sim racing. So I was told by some people, well, if I went back and then went back on a T300, then maybe I would be more able to deal with it knowing what I know. But like Watkins Glen, there's a really horrible left-hand turn towards the end of the, the lap, a left-hander um, over a hill and, and the back end tends to go. Well, with this, with Brad's, uh, simu cube the back end went but instead of like panicking and slowing down it's like i oh, no drama bit of oppo and, and then just power through it whereas with my wheel i'm like i'm feeling certain death you know like the back end steps like i go well that's death back out and then go wide um so yeah i'm sure there are some people out there who have natural talent that could do it with a, a logitech g29 i feel like me with my natural lack of talent the more information you give me the more i can do with it Oh, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always recommend, and everyone does really in the sim racing community, if you're going to upgrade any piece of equipment first, you yeah. upgrade your pedals. Because you having non-load cell pedals is just... Yeah, massive disadvantage. A massive disadvantage. And the amount, straight away, as soon as I upgraded, I was like, whoa, how much time? Why did I not do this sooner? Yeah, um, but it's the same. It's the same with the wheel as well. But that's kind of the natural progression. And yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, that is the way. Is if you've got the best equipment, you're more likely to um, put more practice in as well because you've got nice equipment. And uh, ultimately, that's going to equal lap time. Stupid. I went through all this with golf, you know, ten years ago, and I thought I said never again. And now sim racing is doing the same to me uh, with the pedals. Yeah, with potentiometer ones, you're. You're kind of guessing and you try and get used to the amount of distance for the lock. But with a load cell, you don't guess or judge it. You feel it. And so when you, when I put my boy on it, my 11 year old, straight onto the, a load cell pedal after doing potentiometer. And he, at first he went, it's stuck. I said, no, 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 it's, it's not stuck. Honestly, you just, you just press it. And he's like, well, how, how hard do you press? And he goes, I'm like, honestly, you'll just know. And, and, and he did, because <laughs> it's much easier to judge the pressure than it is the, the distance. Anyway, enough uh, equipment chat. Uh, you said to me you've been doing some, some GT3 stuff this week. We are thinking of putting on a GT3 uh, 12-hour endurance race in December. So I want to chat all things GT3. What have you been up to? Uh, yeah, well, my I've been doing a bit of GT3 this week. I've joined the GT3 league um, elsewhere. So it was at Road Atlanta. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it other plans but i've done a couple of officials and they haven't gone well <laughs> road atlanta is awful oh. firstly i hate that track it's blind it's you have to guess uh, how have your officials gone uh i've done two and i've finished zero. Oh, really so you've not uh, got it's end. been okay. yeah it's two, two very inexperienced well actually two very similar experiences um but i'm seeing kind of across all um all officials at the moment, really. But it's, it's a couple of a uh, couple of dodgy moves, shall we say? Um, I think I mentioned to it before I come on here. Yeah. The the Verstappen move is what I'm <laughs> okay. calling it at the moment. Tell me what you mean by the Verstappen move. When Verstappen likes to get on the inside of someone and forget someone is on his outside, mm. and that he has to leave them racing room and just drives to the edge of the track. And I am seeing that being replicated on iRacing all too often. And unfortunately, we're not, it's 
it's very difficult to go side by side on iRacing anyway, because unfortunately we have this thing called netcode where there's an imaginary gap and the Sometimes, servers yeah. think we've hit each other. Um, so it's bad enough at the best of times, but I've had it so often. Okay, so before I get too much um, hate mail, uh, the, the <laughs> Verstappen move that we're talking about where you just run the car off wide on exit is a move I hate. But before it was a Verstappen move, it was definitely a Hamilton move. And I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan as well. But Hamilton has done that on <laughs> so many occasions to drivers. Like he just bullied poor old Nico Rosberg any time they got side to side. He would just drive to the edge. And I was, as a Hamilton fan, I was screaming at Nico Rosberg and just hold your ground. I wanted to know what would happen if Rosberg just held his ground and just Hamilton just, just hit him and just let him hit you one time and see what happens. And then Verstappen's come in. And he's done it. He's done it even better than Hamilton. Time after time after time. Mm -hmm. Just keeps going wide. People go, whoa, you lunatic, jumps out the way. But because there's no contact, the stewards are like, well, there wasn't any contact. You you drove out of the way. So in these cases where people are doing that to you, if you're just driving out of the way, they're just like, well, okay, I drove. The, the, there was no car in the space that I drove into anymore because he drove out of the way. And, and obviously in F1, that's why there's a controversy now because Hamilton's just going, well... No, I'm not driving out of the way and they're hitting each other. <laughs> so, but in, in uh, iRacing, we don't have, you know, any stewards. So when someone's up the inside of you, are you just jumping out of the way or do you just go, oh, well, hit me then? Well, I'm always respectful. Uh, we'll talk racing. The difference is, is that when I'm in that situation, I leave plenty of room and I want a race long battle. That's what I'm there for. I'm obviously content creating as well so i want yeah. something to, to put online that people can enjoy and also it's a much greater experience for, for everyone the amount of messages i get afterwards of people go oh i really enjoyed that battle and yeah things like that i've just had it all too often uh, where people just that i feel like people don't appreciate defending on iRacing they get frustrated and then they do silly things like that as soon as they get an opportunity they just try and drive drive you off the track in, and, in all essence and, and this is the frustration people have with the officials which is yeah you can protest but so what you're never going to see that guy again but that's why people jump at the chance of entering like a good league but how do you deal with it from a streamer point of view because i've i've been i'm, I'm technically setting myself up for a stream for, for streaming mm -hmm. i want to be regularly in the top splits before i, I start doing it properly but i flash stuffy i i flash my flash to bang is very short and like i, I got taken out by a guy who spun out uh, and then he what he spit he, sp he spun across the whole track trying to get himself back on track and took me out i was on the opposite side of the track and my instinct is to be that i'm like no <laughs> so how how do you control yourself on a stream um sometimes i do sometimes i don't <laughs> it depends if i'm streaming or i'm not um, mm. It all depends on the situation, really. I think sometimes people do need to be called out for, for stupidity mm. um, because it's. we're very fortunate now that a lot of the series, we've got hourly races. We've got the alter, alternate of open and fixed, whereas, oh, I've seen some shockers at Watkins Glen this week um, where people haven't made it to the first corner. If that was iRacing of old, you'd have to wait two hours to the next race yeah. and it could happen yeah. again. So it's... Uh, we're fortunate, but I still think people need to be called out on it. I try and hold my tongue as much as I can. Um, at the moment, I'm just being a little bit disheartened by it, but I'm just, I haven't even got any words to say because it is that common, which is a, which is a shame. So iRacing, it gained a lot of kind of early traction by being the, the service where they had the safety rating and the, the safety points. And that works to, to an extent, but it just it depends how much people care about it. Is this all like top splits with um, high license drivers, or is this like a C class bandit coming in with a high I rating? No, it is uh, obviously now I'm I'm regularly in top splits. Yeah, um, especially for F three, not not so much GT three. I am seeing the, the the same names, and I am becoming aware of people. Once it happens once or twice. I'm becoming aware of the names of people yeah. that I have to be, give a little bit of a wide berth or approach them differently, just as you have to do if you was racing in real life. There's there's people yep. that you know you have to treat differently. Um, but yeah, for obviously if the lowest splits down, I see it, I see it happen. I get clips sent in discords and stuff of people moaning. So it's um, 
yeah, it's it's a difficult one. I, I did start off doing like a Spanners F3 adventures where I was clipping out. Maybe I'll try and be better at that and just clipping out and just <laughs> going, look, this is a thing that happened. I'm not like naming and shaming, but I am naming and shaming. Um, but in our Missed Apex community, you know, we'll go to, we'll be, we'll, there'll be like five of us in a race and on Discord we'll go, well, uh, Francesco there, by the way, he's a lunatic. And like the other four people would be like, Oh yeah, no, he is a lunatic. And then there's one guy who's like, oh no, he's directly behind me. And then sure enough, Francesco goes and just wipes him out and stuff like that. So at least if you are doing a series, you do tend to, the community's small enough that you do know those names, but there's not really that social pressure. There's a few guys there who every single time they're either taking people out or they're spamming the chat or they're being abusive on chat. And everyone knows it. You talk about it and people are like, yeah, we know, but there's no real way to enforce it it's a weird kind of middle ground isn't it because i guess for i racing it's just a, a manpower issue yeah it is and i'm of the mind that i'm there to have an enjoyable race of course i want to win i want to finish as high up as possible but there's some people that are just you know they're gonna go for a, a gap that isn't there and you're just best off just letting mm. them pass and the amount of times i've done it they i've been on the stream i've gone oh here comes so and so um <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll let him pass. He'll take some, we'll we'll uh, we'll reap the rewards from the carnage, and then a couple of laps later, lo and behold, what's happened? So, so, we, so yeah, if, if it's F three after the show, I bet I'll name three names, and I and I bet that you've heard of those those guys. Okay, so we'll, we'll come up with a system. We'll come up with a system. We'll, we'll band together to to highlight this kind of thing. Um, Watkins Glen F three before we go to GT three. Sorry, um, you were saying it's quite it was quite crashy and quite random. I, I did a couple of midday races and two midday races in a row, all three splits. Every single driver who finished on the lead lap got positive I rating, which tells you that it was incredibly crashy. It was absolute carnage. And all you have to do is survive. <laughs> it's one of those tracks. Um, and it's Snetterton coming up next, which is a track I've never driven, which I'm going to have to pay 15 quid or whatever it is to do just this one week. I've heard it's kind of bland, but I don't really know anything about it. Uh, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I've just done a track, guys, so I've run quite a few laps on it oh, last course. night to put it together. Um, so cheeky little plug there. Go check that out, guys. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a link. <laughs> Give me a link but and it's... we'll put it in the show notes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, in, in the fixed setup um, that is really planted around there, and I think it's going to make for much better racing, believe it or not, than Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen, it was without the bus stop chicane, so there was it was very draft-heavy with that back straight. So I think that's why there was a lot of crashes. People just forget that your breaking point changes when you're in yeah. someone's draft, when you've got a second's worth of draft. Snetterton isn't so much like that. It's high downforce, a few, couple of hairpins, um, obviously some corners that you've got to be wary of where there will be inevitable crashes. But I think it's going to make for much better racing than than Watkins Glen. Watkins Glen as well, it gets a bit boring when there's just such a long mm -hmm. draft because that's the main overtaking point. It's just like, oh, there you are. And you can't, you can't lose someone, you know, you get ahead of them. But if you don't, you have to get like 8.8 .8 seconds ahead and, 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 and unless you want them to draft you back. I felt really guilty on the straight. Oh, my gosh. There's a bump on the straight. Yes. And it's where the bus stop chicane would be. So you go down that straight. I can, I can say this now because the race is finished, but I benefited from this so much. If you're on the far left, you're fine. If you're one card's width in, you hit the bump, you ground out on the fixed setup and slow down. So you've got to make sure at all costs that you're on the outside. So I was like faking to go down the inside. I was making it look like I was desperate to get down the inside and then last minute getting to the outside. And then what would happen is you'd get to that bump and even if they were ahead of you, they would ground out and, and fall back. Did you notice that? I did, yeah. Yeah, and I was just using that to, and I felt guilty in the end because these people must have been getting so frustrated. I'm getting the run on him. Why? I've got the run. Why isn't it happening? It's just knowing the track. It's yeah, it's just, there's a little, there's Snetterton as well. There's a little bit on the main straight. Oh, is there? The, uh, where where are you? Oh, tell me, come on. On the right hand side, there's a big bump mm -hmm. um, around halfway down the main straight that does a similar thing, grounds the car out, and you lose quite a bit of speed. So you want to be to the middle or left hand side of the track. But it's a difficult one because the first corner is a very high speed corner mm -hmm. and you want to be on the inside. So it's. Um, Hey, you don't want to be too far over. But, uh, yeah, okay. just, that's I'll, another thing to I'll check look out. out for that. Okay, tell me what you're doing. What are you doing in the world of GT3? Yeah, so... So, um, so Road Atlanta, racing... sorry. It was Road Atlanta. How, how are you finding it? Because I, I did... I did um, 
what did we do? Uh, spa. We did the spa 24 hour and mm-hmm. I felt like a fish out of water. I really struggled. We had the Lambo and it was just, oh, yeah. I, I don't know, it was heavy and light. Uh, and I just, I didn't, I think you have to overdrive it and I wasn't. That's not the style I'm doing. What are you driving? Uh, I've been driving the BMW recently. So just before last season, I did a couple of VRS Endurances. Uh, really enjoyed those. Uh, the BMW is probably the best GT3 at the moment. It just rides the curbs like they're not even there. Right. Uh, and that's the thing with the GT3 cars. And I race in, a, at the end of last season, the BMW was very overpowered, but they've balanced it out a bit more now. And there's a nice variety. So um, it, each track is going to suit a car differently. So the Lamborghini, for example, this week is very low ride. It's not doesn't suit road atlanta's bumps whereas the bmw right. is is much better but i haven't done as many races as i'd like to i really do like gt3 cars uh, you do get some some good races and you get a pit stop as well which is um adds to a bit of a strategy element which i've always liked hence why i like the endurance so how, how long are the races the endurance and uh, endurance races are three hours long so they're every saturday and sunday blimey one pla- one person no you have to oh do it okay you can oh, okay. do it as one person, but you'll get disqualified. Oh, I see. Okay. So. <laughs> Is it, okay, so who, who's your buddy? Who, give, give a shout out to your teammate. Uh, Tony Turbo, uh, Anthony, or Callum Reed. So they're, oh, okay. they're the two guys that I normally race with, which is really typical. I couldn't make the VRS Endurance at the weekends. Those two guys mm. raced and ended up winning their split. Without you? Without me. Mm-hmm. So could you so, do three? Could you do a three-man team if you wanted to? You can do yeah. three. I think... Mm. If you do a three man team, you are a bit of a slight time detriment mm. because the of the um driver changes. Um because if you've got three however many drivers you've got, so even if you've got four drivers, you have to have a point of where every single driver is in the car. Mm. Otherwise you get disqualified. Right. So Generally, most people do it with two, but you can do it with three as well. So I'm I'm with you. But when I did the the Spa twenty four, the way I was driving was so different because i had teammates and and my first stint wasn't until 12 hours into the the race so imagine it was yeah complicated i was actually i was unwell at the time but uh i jumped in did that stint and you go there's so much pressure to not ruin (laughs) to like not ruin what everyone else has done in a car i didn't know very well and and i felt like i had to really drive within myself but i guess that is the whole philosophy with endurance driving in general is kind of driving within yourself, looking at the big picture. Yeah, definitely. There's there's a time to push and there's a time to not. I mean, I generally like going first because you just kind of get it out of the way and done with. Uh, and you're in control. I'm a bit of a control freak. I hate handing control over to people. Um, <laughs> so don't be in a team. You're sitting there with your... Oh. But it's, it's, and likewise, there's been times where people have probably gone, oh, my God, Scott, why are you going <laughs> Why go for it? Why flat but out? Yeah, that's, <laughs> but that's the beauty of it. Driving, we are, it is an individual sport to an extent um, where it is just us against other people and, and the track. And that's why I love endurance races because it is a team event and it adds that you win together and you lose together, that typical Lewis Hamilton quote. Um, but it is true, and it's just so much more enjoyable when you get to enjoy those experiences. Oh, it's lo- No, you're wrong. Right, I'll tell you why you're wrong. It's lose-lose. <laughs> so if you and me are on a team and something goes wrong, either I'm the idiot that ruined it or I'm annoyed at you <laughs> because you ruined it, <laughs> I'd rather just be annoyed at myself if I ruin it. Well, you say that. I did um, the VLN Endurance. That's the the, ner- the Nautch Life one Yeah. at the end of last season, and I allowed... Um, a teammate to go first and he was in the car for an hour and a half and he binned it so i just spent an hour and a half watching him lap the nautch life basically and then <laughs> oh binned it to the point that it was dead yeah binned oh, it to the, my to the goodness. point that it was dead yeah, yeah. um unfortunately <laughs> so yeah it was just <laughs> so personal question have you got kids no. No. And I think that's why you can afford to spend an hour and a half watching someone else play the video game <laughs> and then, sorry, video game, don't kill me, and, and then not even have your turn. Uh, but let's talk about the driving styles uh, a little bit. Um, like I said, with the Lamborghini, I, I felt like you, I had to overdrive it and be aggressive. A, am I right? Is that the same with all GT3 cars? Do you just need to muscle them a bit more? Yes and no, you can do. As I said, each car has its different characteristics. Um, 
when the Lamborghini first came out, I really enjoyed driving it. And then I just drifted away from it because I found the BMW or the Porsche uh, GT3 was just much better suited to my driving style. It was just, I don't know, they felt a bit lighter. I do think because the Lamborghini is very wired. Uh. It's, um, but th- but there's tracks where where it, that will suit its best. I mean, it's, it's really good around Suzuka and things like that. And that's the good thing about GT3s is that different cars suit different tracks. Uh, it's not just the one car and that's it. Okay, let's talk. Let's put this in Mario Kart terms that every everyone will understand. Uh, so, for example, like the Mercedes felt like it was the Bowser or, or the the Donkey Kong one, where it was like got a lot of power, it's fast in a straight line, but you needed to get that stopped nice and early, <laughs> give it a lot of warning that there's a corner, and, and then get away. Yes, yeah. Uh, just to elaborate as well is that each car has different driving styles because the weight transfer Ah, so what you have to remember with these cars is that they all have engines in different positions so lamborghini is a mid-engine car the mercedes is a front engine car um same as the bmw so they all react differently and that's why they suit different tracks better um and that's why obviously the lateral movement of of the weight transfer as well is completely different to say driving formula three where you can just throw it into any corner yeah so with with the formula three i was speaking to brad about that earlier and he was just saying because it's got relatively little power for its downforce you can really like get a long way into the corner before you have to start worrying about i don't know slowing down and turning Uh, and so that's something i've been working on as well as you can you can kind of aim for the apex quite a bit earlier like watkins Glen, for example like you can take a surprising amount of speed into the carousel before you have to really worry about being on the apex and stuff. Um, and then when you go to the GT3, it's completely different, completely different animal. Yeah, definitely. That, that's why with GT3s, there's more emphasis on trail braking. Sure. Uh, I remember a, a period of time where I hadn't raced a GT3 in months, and I just I, I thought, oh, I'll give it a go. And, and I just couldn't get the braking right. I was oh, getting so frustrated with myself and then realized it's, it's all to do with the the trail braking because you're controlling the weight transfer of the car through the corner. Whereas with uh, open wheel cars, it's more of that initial um, brake pressure. Yeah. It, so so getting the- getting up to the locking point as quickly as you can, or, or progressively getting to the locking point, and, and then and then you've got your weight forward and you're using your downforce and you're getting the grip on the front tires. And I guess that's much more of an issue with the GT3s. So I guess I, I'm braking maybe further back then I think I need to get yes. easing the brakes on, getting the weight pushed forward, getting my weight onto the front tires, I guess. And as you start turning, getting it onto your front tire of choice. Is that is that the key? Yeah, that's that it. Yeah. And it's, it's it's managing, it's all about managing the weight transfer and just slight holding that brake, a little bit of brake through the corners mm. and then on the throttle. Um, we, we're quite lucky in GT3s that we've got ABS as well. So you can, within reason, stamp your foot on the brake. Uh, the ABS will kick in, so it's not like the wheels will properly lock up. It's that's why people race GT3s because you can have a bit, a little bit more argy bargy and uh, have a bit more of a more chance of a race. Yeah, I get it. Racing line, just put the racing line on then. If that's what it is. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess is that realistic? That's the real life version of the GT3s would also have that. Someone said to me that the more because you can set the ABS level, can't you? And you can set the traction control level and stuff. So is it the more you rely on that, the more you like heat up your brakes and tires or whatever? Yeah, so mm. if the traction control kicks in, then it's gonna it's kind of it's all about inducing that intra- that traction so you get out of the corners, but it also bogs the car down right. as well. Yep. So it's it's about finding that right balance. I have heard some rumors of people not even using any traction control yeah. um, in sim racing because they feel like they just they have that much control. They don't need it. But us mere mortals, um, we need a bit, little bit of extra help. Speak for yourself. I, I don't know. I think I'd like to get to that point with a GT3 just because I've got so used to with the single seaters feeling for that bite point. And, and and one place where where I'm gaining an advantage on my peers, not the top guys, but my level peers, is being able to get to that bite point and, and flirting with it, if you like, and being, you know, and, and less to a lesser extent, you know, on the power as well although everyone who's fast in the f3 seems to just go what do you mean feather the throttle just on (laughs) from zero to on just go just deal with it um okay so 
lastly, before you go, because I want to keep these relatively short, mm -hmm. I want your advice for our winter GT3 12 hours. We're going to do 12 hours of, of Silverstone. So invite some teams to come in. It's for charity. Hey. It's for charity, baby. So you just pay like a charity fee and then you come in. We were wondering about, I probably won't do this, but I know there's a lot of charity events where you can like pay a fiver to remove ballast or something like that. Like we might try, you know, things like that, just to try and um, you know raise a bit of cash for this for this charity. But um, the my my my, con, my co conspirators wanted to do multi class, and okay. I said keep it GT three or keep it single class because if we do multi class, you've only got like twelve people in your class. Yes, you've got the action of all the the mixed pace, but you're unlikely to get like a close battle for the podium places. So I've, I am pushing really hard for single class. What would you go for? I get the excitement of multi-class, but I agree over the course of an endurance race of 12 hours, um, it's, it is kind of rare that you get people uh, that will get that close a fight toward the end for the podium places. Also as well, you've always got, if you do multi-class, there's, the worry of faster cars uh, smashing <laughs> yeah smashing into the slower cars and especially with silverstone where it's got some uh, slow corners especially like at the ends is it club corner i think it yeah, is yeah vale um, into there it's you always bode the risk of, of that happening i think stick stick to gt3 yep. and possibly even stick to fixed setups as well because Ooh. then you've got more of a level playing field don't know how people feel about that um but there's, at least you know, it's it's much more of a level playing field than it is someone who's spent X amount of hours putting time into a setup. <sighs> yeah, bless those people who spend all the time on the setup. But for me, the negative rake uh, F3 setups have just ruined open setup for me. Like I'm, I'm near, and, and the fixed setups that they've been running for F3 alongside it every alternate hour uh, has like just killed the argument. I much, much prefer the fixed setups. Why they decide to make the track oven temperature for the fixed setups, I don't know. But basically, I describe it as there's the F3 championships and then there's the Hacker League. So yeah, like the, 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 the fixed is the, the F3 Strong championship. Words. The open is just the Hacker League because you just get someone who's just like a billion seconds ahead and just flies past you on the straight because they've got some weird, you know, negative rake hack thing going on. Anyway, good. This has been a great relaunch of the Miss Apex I Racing podcast. I'm very happy. Stuffy, you spell your name weird online i never remember it how can people find you <laughs> 17 y's on the end of stuffy it is it's basically just my last name with an extra y on the end i still don't know who that person is who's taken my last Camping. name <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's um stuffy with two y's s-t-u-double-f-e-double-y um and yeah i should be the only one on there on oh so your genuine surname is stuffy with one y s-t-u-f-f-e-y no oh. so s is my first initial obviously the first uh, name scott and, and then tuffy is my last name I'm with you. All right. I like that. I, I'll, I'm saying I'll put a link, but Matt doesn't help me with this show, so it's unlikely that I will <laughs> actually remember. Um, if you want to suggest a topic or ask a question, uh, you're more than welcome. You can get in touch with me, spanners at mistapex.net. Just make the subject line iRacing or something like that. Um, and you can also email racecontrol at mistapex.net if you want to get involved in either our mini Swarm F3 Championship or our, our bigger broadcasted events as well you'd be more than welcome to join us all right we'll be back next week until then work hard be kind and have fun this was missed apex i racing podcast here's the bit that goes Pew! Brilliant. That, that was a great launch. That's gone exactly as planned. I, I'm trying to make that like unburdensome, jump on every now and then. And if I like bother you once a month, you probably. Be